Hello everyone! Today we will create an interface for our application. And the interface will be created in 3ds Max. For that we will be using planes and a dummy object. First let's hide the environment sphere. We don't need it for now. And it will prevent us from seeing the camera clearly. Now let's create a button. For the button we need simple plain object. Let's create it. In the parameters let's set the size to 004 and 0035. Next, we need dummy object. We can find it under the helpers, dummy. This dummy will serve as a parent for all our buttons. We will tie them to this dummy, so it will be easier to move several buttons at once. Now let's tie the button to the dummy. For that we will use select and link. Let's press the button, drag and drop to the dummy and now the button is tied to the dummy. If we move the dummy, the button moves with it. Now let's go back to our button, select it, then select and move. And here instead of you, let's select parent. Now let's go back to select and move. And now in the menu we will see the coordinates that are tied to the parent, to its center, not to the global coordinates. And let's set them all to zero. So now it will be right in the center of our dummy. Alright, now let's add some more buttons. Let's move the first by 005 on Y axis. For the second button, let's move it by minus 005, again on Y axis. Now let's select the dummy object and tie it to the camera. Again, let's select it. Select and move, here let's set to parent and again in this menu let's set everything to zero. Ok, now our dummy object is right in the center of camera view. Now let's go to select and rotate, open the dialog window and set rotation to zeros, so the dummy will have the same rotation as camera. Ok, now let's move the dummy until we see our buttons. So we will move the buttons outside the camera clipping. Also you can set the camera clipping here. With these parameters set, everything closer to camera than 1 meter will not be rendered. As well as outer edge. 20 meters, everything further than 20 meters will not be rendered. So we need to find the perfect spot for our buttons, when they will be visible, but as close to the camera as possible. Now let's move them to the left and export it. Let's open the application. Ok, good, now the buttons are moving with the camera. Now back to Max, let's select dummy object and in Virtual3D Advanced Rendering settings, let's set horizontal to left. That is needed to always tie the dummy to the left side of the screen. Let's export again, back to the app. 
reload it and now as you can see the center of our dummy is tied exactly to the left side of the screen but of course we want the buttons to be visible we need to add some offset let's go back to max and here let's set feet offset to 0025 that will be enough and now let's re-export back to the app let's reload it okay great now all the buttons are on the left side of the screen and we can see them now we don't need to worry about the resolution of the device that will be used to see the application no matter the size the screen orientation the buttons will always stay on the left side of the screen all right now let's set up materials for our buttons. For that let's go to Slate Editor. Let's find some empty space. And add new physical material. Now let's add the texture. If you copied all the files from this lesson to the application folder, you will find all the needed textures here. The first one will be Unfold Knife button. In Texture Settings, in Mono Channel Output, we need to select Alpha. We need to set it this way, because now when we will plug our texture into one of black and white material inputs, 3D Max will take it from alpha channel of the texture, not the color channels. The alpha channel of this texture contains the black and white mask of transparency. This mask makes our plane look as a hexagon. Ok, let's plug in the texture into emission color map and into cut out opacity map as well. So, this input will take alpha channel as opacity. Let's set base color and reflection color to 0. And it's done. Now let's assign it to our first button. Actually, let's name our buttons. The first button will be Unfold Knife button. And the material will be called Unfold Knife Button Material. Let's export it to Verge and see how it looks like. Let's reload. Ok, now the first button is done. Alright, now let's do the same for other buttons. Let's assign materials to them and name them properly. Alright, the materials are ready. Let's export. Ok, good. All buttons are ready. Now let's create three more buttons for the right panel. Let's go back to 3D Max. For that I will just copy all the buttons with dummy object and drag them all to the right with shift pressed. This way they all will be copied to the new place. Also, for the sake of clean work, let's call the left dummy left panel and right dummy right panel. The buttons need some treatment too, of course. Let's rename them 
and set different materials to them. The first button will be switching the material to carbon. The second will be plastic, the one that we have right now. And the third one will be wood material. Also, for this dummy, we need to set fit to camera edge, horizontal to right. So, this dummy object will be tied to the right side of the screen. And now we need to set up materials for our new buttons. Let's skip it, because everything is the same. Ok, all three materials are ready. Let's export, reload the app. Alright, looks perfect, all the buttons are ready. Now, as everything is done, let's put our environment back and re-export again. Everything is done, but let's add one more feature. Let's make sure that the user understands that these are buttons by changing the cursor when it is over the buttons. For that, let's go to Puzzles. As an example, let's look at these functional buttons. As you can see, the cursor is changing from arrow to hand when we are hovering over these buttons. And it makes it easier to understand that this is a button. For this effect, we already have a template in the Puzzles library. To go to this library, we need to press this book button. And here we need Howard's cursor. Let's drag and drop it. This is a setup from several puzzles. The main is when hovered. So when we hover over selected object with our cursor, the logic from over do input will apply. And when we hover our cursor away from the object, then the logic from out do will be applied. In this case, when we hover over the object, the cursor will change to pointer or a hand, and when we move cursor away, it changes back to default. So here we need to change the selector from cube to our buttons. Let's delete the cube and, well, we could copy it six times, but it's better to make a group or a list. For that, let's go to lists, drag and drop create list with puzzle and now we need to add some more inputs. To do it, we need to press this gear button which will open the preferences and add more items to the list on the right. Now we can plug in here six objects, exactly what we need. Let's go to selectors, select the upper block and now we need to find here our buttons. It doesn't matter in which order we will plug them in. Now, as all buttons are plugged in, let's save it, reload the app, and yep, yeah, it is working. When we hover over these buttons, the cursor changes, and we can tell for sure that we can click it. And that's all. In later tutorials, we will add interactivity to these buttons. So, see you in the next tutorial.